welcome to the World Storytelling Café. With me, writer Irene Lofthouse, here in the family tent. I'm here today to tell you a story about a legend. And it's a legend that's based in my hometown of Bradford, which is in West Yorkshire, in England. And Yorkshire is a very, very big county. So big, in fact, that it's bigger than some countries. Now, Bradford today is a very big city, almost 500,000 people. But the story I'm going to tell you is from way, way back in the past. Could be the 1100s, it could be the 1300s, or 1400s. Because the thing about legends is they can be made up, made up of a little bit of truth. See, that's the difference between myths and legends. Myths are stories that we make up to try and explain things about things we don't understand, like the Greek myths, Zeus, Prometheus, Hephaestus, or the goddess of peace, Irene, whom I'm named after, apparently. But today I'm going to be talking about a legend. And a legend is something that, I said, as I said, has a little bit of truth in it, but then is embellished and added to, and as everybody tells it, a little bit more is added, or changed, and then a little bit more, or changed again. So this legend that I'm going to tell you about, which is about the last ravaging boar of Bradford, has about seven different ways of telling it. So, the story starts really with, why has Bradford, here, on our coat of arms, got a boar's head at the top. Our coat of arms was given in 1847, and we still had the boar's head on it then. So this is the telling of that story. So like I said, Bradford, in 1847 at this time, was also a big city, known as Worstadopolis. It was a wool city, which is why we've got an Angora goat on here. But the time I'm talking about, which is back in the 11th century, Bradford was a small hamlet of only about 300 people. And the place I'm talking about is a place called Cliff Wood in Bradford, which is an ancient forest. Here's a little picture. This is St Peter's Church, which is now Bradford Cathedral. Here we have the hamlet of Cliff Wood, and here we've got Bolling Hall, all of which feature in our story. Now the people here in Cliff Wood, they lived in a small hamlet with a few people who went out and did a little bit of farming, maybe with their cow, ploughing their lynchettes, the little strip systems that they used to have, and they might have had a chicken or a goat, and they were surrounded by this forest that was owned by the Lord of the Manor at Bolling Hall, Mr. de Bolling. De Bolling, because this is the time is just after the Norman invasion, when William the Conqueror invaded England and won. Managed to best Harold Hardraster down at Hastings. So this forest was owned by the Lord up here. Now these people living here in this little hamlet had become very very scared because roaming around this forest between Cliffwood and Ecclesill a couple of miles to the north and Idle another couple of miles was the last ravaging boar of Bradford and the people were very scared because it was said that this boar this huge boar with huge tusks this ravaging boar had been seen in the forest of Idle, Ide the Saxon's place. And it was said that it had taken some babies. It had eaten the chickens. It had eaten the goats. You can see it's had something to eat. And when all those were eaten, the only things that were left were the babies. And the boars liked the babies because they smelled of milk. And one day, walking through the forest at Idle, one of the Idle villagers 
So, wrapped up, thinking it was the baby that had been stolen, but all that was left was a blanket. So the people in Cliff Wood, knowing that this had happened and that this boar was ravaging around their forest, they were very, very scared. I mean, what would happen? That's all that they had to live on was their chickens for their eggs and the meat and the goats for the milk and the cows for the milk and the bits out in the forest. But what could they do? The men, they were all too scared to go out into the forest to maybe go blackberrying and to get their water. Because in their hamlet, there was no water. There might have been a well, but sometimes the well dried up. So they had to go and walk through the forest down to Spinkwell, which never dried up. And even today has never dried up. But they were too scared to go out into the forest with this ravaging boar that might attack them. And what would happen if they came in and they ate all their chickens and they ate all their goats and they attacked the cows and they're always left was their babies. They were really, really scared. And all the men folk and the women folk were all saying, well, what can we do? What can we do? We can't go out there because we, we, they might attack us and we might get scared and, and then they might come and they might get all our chickens and, and then they might take our babies and then, what are we gonna do? And one of the men said, well, what I think we should do is we should go to the Lord of the Manor, Mr. de Bolling at Bolling Hall, because he's the Lord, and we should take a petition to him. And we should say to him, please, sir, help us, because we're going to lose everything, all our chickens and our goats and our cow and, and maybe our babies. And please, you've got to help us, sir. So that's what they decided to do. So a lot of the hamlet, the people in the hamlet, got together a petition. So they would go to the Lord of the Manor, Mr. de Bolling, and what they had to do, because Bradford is in a dip, that's why it's called Broadford, because in the middle of Bradford there is a little river that comes through called Bradford Beck, which is why people came and stopped with their sheep, and when they washed the sheep and they went, hey, this wool, hey, it's really soft, isn't it? We'll get a lot more at market if we have our sheep here. And that's how Bradford grew up, around its sheep. But it's called Broadford, because to get to Bradford from Idle, or Thackley, or Cliffwood, you've got to go down the hill. And to get to Bolling Hall, Bolling Hall, where the Lord of the Manor lived, is at the other side. So you've got to go down a hill and then climb a hill. So all these here, from Cliffwood had to set off and go down the hill with their petition and then back up the hill to the Lord of the Manor. And they went and they knocked on the door at Bolling Hall. And of course, because he's the Lord of the Manor and they paid taxes to him, they had to be very, very nice to him because he was the Lord of the Manor and they wanted him to help them. So as the people arrived, please sir, your lordship sir, please sir, can you help us sir? We've got a petition sir, because there's a last ravaging boar of Bradford and he's going through all the forest and he's, and he's eating everything and we can't go out and get any water and they're eating the chickens and he's eating the goats and, and he's even eating the babies and please sir, please sir, help us because, because we need some help sir. Well, Mr. de Bolling, being the lord of the manor, hmm, he, had a, a little bit of a think because they were the people who paid him taxes, which is why he was quite rich. So he had a, a bit of a think. Mm, now what, uh, what can I do? Hmm. I know, I will issue a proclamation because of course, Mr. de Bolling still spoke with a French accent because this is just after the time of the Norman invasion. And those people who held the land, like Edward de Lacey and Mr. de Bolling, they were of French stock. So that's how they spoke. Mm, I will issue a proclamation. And this will help all those in my hamlet. It will help you with Cliff Woods to stop this ravaging cushion, this ravaging boar from killing all the chickens. And it means then that if you are still alive, you can pay me the taxes and I will still be a rich man and the Lord of the manor. So Mr. de Bolling, he 
opened his proclamation and he declared, Ha! Whosoever brings me the dead boar or its head shall be rewarded with a parcel of land at Hunt's Yard, out with the city center. I do hereby proclaim as the Lord of the Manor of Bowling, signed this day, Mr. De Bowling, Lord of the Manor. Well, of course, with this proclamation, all of the young men and some of the older men at Cliffwood, they were really excited because they thought, land, I'll have some land of my own. I won't have to pay, well, I might have to pay some taxes to the Lord of the Manor, but I'll have some land of my own and then I'll be able to have people working for me. So many of the young men decided that they were going to go out into Cliff Forest and Cliffwood and look for this boar. So they took their bows and their arrows, because this is how they shot when they hunted for game, and they walked very quietly around Cliffwood, trying not to break and snap any branches while they looked for the boar, feeling really, really brave. And off they went walking around. On well, this particular day, when these young men were out there, the boar was down at the well, down by Spinkwell, having a drink. Only he could smell all the young men. And the young men, and they saw the boar and realized that the boar could smell them. Did they fire their arrows? Did they walk upon them and fire and fire to kill the boar? No, those young men saw the boar with its huge tusks and its red eyes and they <laughs> ran back to Cliffwood feeling very, very scared because they didn't realize how big this boar was. But there was one young man called Mr. Northrop. Now, Mr. Northrop, was a small chap and he'd already had his chickens eaten and he didn't have a go anywhere and he didn't really have any field or any lynchettes to do and he thought well I've got nothing to lose have I? I can't go out and get any water and if I don't have any water eventually I'll die anyway and I haven't got anything to eat and I'm not even married so I don't have a baby so they're not going to come it's and eat me baby, so I haven't got out to lose, have I? So, what I will do is I'm going to go and get that bow and I'm going to take my bow and arrow and I'm going to take my dagger with me as well. I'll just put my dagger in there. And he watched all those young men running back, but he continued to walk through Cliff Woods. And as he got a bit further down, the wind changed so the boar couldn't hear him or smell him. Then as he got further down, he came to the well along the track. And you know what it's like when it's a sunny day or one of those big feasts you've been to and you've just had a big load to eat and you're all full. Hey, you think you know, you know. I think I'll have a bit of a rest. Well, that's what he saw the boar do. Because the boar had already had something to eat and Mr. Northrop could tell because there was blood along the track as he walked there. And when he got just close so he could see the ravaging boar, he was laying down in the sun and he could hear it because it was having a bit of a... <coughs> Oh, Mr. Northrop, he waited for a little while just to see if it would wake up. And it didn't. So he took out his arrows, then he put them on his bow, and he shot all the arrows that he'd got 
in his quiver and there were no movement. So he waited a bit and then he went to see and he went over to the boar and he got his leg and he pushed the boar to see if it had moved and it didn't move. And he tried again just in case and he kicked it and it didn't move. And Mr Northrop, I, I've killed the boar, I've killed the boar. I'm gonna have some land in Hunt Yard. I've killed the boar, oh, all, I have to, all I have to do is, I've just got to take the boar now to Mr De Bolling and then, and then I'll be, I'll be a big man. Not a little man like I am, I'll be big. So he put down his, his arrow and his bow and he went down to try and get the boar. Now Mr De Northrop was small and the boar was very big. So he knelt down and he got his hands underneath it and he... gonna do? Ah, what am I gonna do? I want to be rich, I can have that land. Oh, I know, I know what I can do. So, he got his dagger and he chopped 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 in the mouth and he took out the tongue. It were all still a bit greasy and with bits on from what the boar had eaten. But you're right, I can take the tongue now to Mr. De Bolling and then I can prove that I've killed it. So he took his dagger and he put it in his pocket and off he ran. Remember, he's got to run down and then run up the hill and it's a couple of miles away. So he's off and he's running and he's running and he's running. Now, while Mr. Northrop was off running up the hill, somebody else came past. Somebody else who saw the ball asleep down at the water. But Mr. De Manning was a little bit richer than Mr. Northrop. And he had a sword. He also had a horse. And he came riding along <laughs> on his horse. And he saw the ball, and he, well, I'd say, ah, there's the ball. And he went up and he kicked it, and it's not moving. And he saw the arrows in the back of it that Mr. Northrop had done. Well, who on earth could have left me the ball? Well, all I need to do is to pick up this dead ball and take it to Mr. De Bolling and... I'm going to be even richer than I already am. So, Mr. De Manning also got down. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Try that again, I'm a strong man. Mm -hmm. I can't lift the ball. I can't even lift it to get up my horse. So, what am I going to do? Mm, what shall I do? I know I have a sword. I can chop the head off. So that's what Mr. De Manning did. And he got the head and he got back on his horse and rode to Bolling Hall. Now, of course, Mr. De Manning was on his horse. Mr. Northrop was on his legs. And I bet you guessed who was the first to get to Bolling Hall? Yes, Mr. De Manning. So he turned up and on the door of Mr. De Bolling, Sire, sir, uh, I bring you fantastic news. I have killed the last ravaging boar of Bradford. Mr. De Bolling, of course, wanted proof. Ah, Mr. De Manning, it's very good to see you, and uh, exactly 
How can you tell me that you have killed the boar? Because, sire, I have about my person the head of the last ravaging boar of Bradford. Oh, Mr. De Manning, this is fantastic, say, magnifique. That means that there is no ravaging boar anymore. And all the people in Cliff Woods and Echo Zill and Idol, they will all be, oh, so pleased that this is the case. So there was big celebrations happening. The head was put on the floor, hands were shook, and you will have the land in Hunt Yard, Mr. Demani. Oh, thank you, sir. It was, it, it was nothing. I mean, it was just my duty, obviously, you know. And at the same time as all the celebrations were happening, there was another knock on the door. <sighs> oh, go and see, go and see, said Mr. De Bolly. So in comes a very... <sighs> sire, <clears throat> sire, sorry, sire. <clears throat> You've got to get me breath, because I've been running. For quite a way. <coughs> and your name is? Uh, uh, it's Mr. Northrop. Uh, say, and I've, I've brought great news for you. Great news. I've killed the last ravaging boar of Bradford. I have, say, I have. Mr. De Bolling was looking a bit confused. Ah. Um, no, Mr. Nosrop, I don't think you have, because we have already here the head of the boar of Bradford, which Mr. De Manningham has killed. Yes, that's, um, that's right, I did. I, uh, with my sword, I chopped it off. Mr. Northrop was also looking confused. Uh, but, uh, <coughs> sire, no, no, I, I killed it, sire. I, I did. I do not think so. Look, here it is. Oh, but sire, sir. Sir, have you looked in his mouth, sir? La bouche? But uh, why would I look in the mouth? Uh, sir, because if you have a look, sir, you'll see, sir, that um, I cut out his tongue, sir, when I killed it. So Mr. De Bolling ordered the head to be picked up and looked inside, and indeed, there was no tongue. He wasn't very happy. Mr. De Bolling turned to Mr. Manningham and said, You, sir, you are a deceiver. You are a cheat and a liar. You, sir, will not be getting the land in Hunt Yard. Instead, Mr. Manningham, I will just move you around. You are going to the dungeon! Off with him! So Mr. De Manningham obviously wasn't very happy either. But Mr. De Bolling said to Mr. Northrop, but you, sir, you are a saviour. You have saved the Cliffwood, the Ecclesville, the Idol, the Bolling from the last ravaging boar of Bradford. So to you, sir, I give Aunt's Yard over in Great Autumn. And also, I give to you the hand of my daughter in marriage, though he hadn't bothered to ask her, because they didn't do that kind of thing then. And so, hopefully you will live happily ever after. And of course, there were big celebrations across all Cliffwood and Bradford. And here we've got the people of Cliffwood rejoicing that Mr. Northrop and his lady friend, who doesn't have a name, because they're very often not mentioned in stories. And his bow and his arrow and his dagger and the head and the tomb. But Mr. De Manningham, sadly, mm. don't like it here in the dungeons very much. Have to be more honest next time. And this is the reason why we have the boar's head on the coat of arms. And in this story, we mentioned the well and the water where the boar was drinking, and we've mentioned Hunt's Yard, and 
In fact, here I have a picture of Huntyard because this is the place in Great Horton in Bradford where you can go and see the land that Mr Northrop was given. And you can also walk to the Boswell. That still exists, along with Spinkwell, which still has never run dry. So that ancient tale, that legend, has been retold so many different times, whether it was Mr Northrop or Mr de Manningham or Mr Rishworth. But the great thing about stories in terms of legends is that you, as a writer, you can make up those stories as much as you like. You can take a little legend and retell it in so many different ways. It could be the men that did that, but it could be some of the children in the village that did that. It could be the women. It could be all of them together. You can take a story like that with a legend wherever you want to take it. So you could choose maybe a legend that you know somewhere in your town or your city or your country and you could rework that as a completely different story from maybe a child's perspective could be from the animal's perspective has anybody written the story from the perspective of the boar maybe it was really lonely because it was the last boar in Bradford and it was angry because it was the last boar in Bradford but you can decide in your story how you want to write something and how you want to retell a legend. So that's the story of the last ravaging boar in Bradford. And that's been told here in the World Storytelling Cafe in our family tent. And you might see, if you're looking on the website, that there's a little donate button. So you could pay what you think if you've enjoyed the story and maybe other stories. And there are lots of other stories on the World Storytelling Cafe website. So do have a look, and I hope you've enjoyed that. And this is me, Irene Lofthouse, saying goodbye from the World Storytelling Cafe. Did you enjoy that storyteller? Of course you did. And if you enjoyed it, like the minstrels of old, we're passing around the hat. And if you have some, whether it's paper or coin, our storytellers would appreciate what you put in, every penny you put in goes directly to that storyteller through paper. All you have to do is go to worldstorytellingcafe.com Click on today's stories or click on that storyteller and there'll be a hat below the story. And you can just drop a little in that hat. Well, thank you for listening. And if you can afford it, we'd appreciate it.